Hey, LWC family, hope you're all doing well today. It's Pastor Dylan here, and we are here once again for our weekly Devo. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our conversations about these means of grace that we've been covering. And so the one we're going to be talking about is fasting. And before I get into that, uh, these means of grace are just a fancy way of saying that these are biblically-based things that, that we can do that allow God's grace to freely flow through us and in us to better make us more like Christ. And so with that in mind, wherever you're at, would you just join with me in prayer for a moment? Uh, Lord, we thank you so much uh, just for the day. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that you've made yourself available to us. Allow us all just to be encouraged from this time together and that we would all come away from it looking a little bit more like you today. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you again for your blessings in your name. Amen. Amen. So fasting is something that comes up throughout all of Scripture. Um, but arguably the most famous occurrence of fasting is when Jesus himself uh, was fasting and took some time in the desert for 40 days even, uh, not eating. And in that time, you know, he was tempted by the devil. And so in Matthew 4, we get a great look into this conflict between Jesus and the devil there. And so the first thing that we hear about Jesus after fasting for 40 days is that he was hungry. I mean, talk about an understatement. I don't know about you, but if I go hardly 40 minutes without eating, I am not myself. Uh, but Jesus, it says, was very, very hungry. And so what Jesus affirms in this interchange with, with his enemy is that there's a truth that we are not meant just to live on food. Food is not the only thing that sustains us, right? And Jesus affirms this when he quotes the scripture to resist that temptation. He says in Matthew 4, 4, it says, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, when we fast, we are forcing ourselves to into, into a position of weakness and humility where, you know, Jesus was denying his power, denying his abilities to provide and to be in, in, interconnected with God the Father. In those few days, those 40 days, and that temptation following, he was denying himself and allowing uh, his dependence on God to be even more prominent. So God obviously designed us to take in life-giving nourishment, like food, like water, sleep, all those things. But when we are fasting, we focus on the deep truth that we are not dependent on those things for sustenance. Those, it's no more vital to us than God's breath, right? There's no more nourishment we can find in eating than we can in God's provision. And this lesson is not a, a lesson learned easily, right? It's only learned by experience. You see, we are motivated by bodily impulses. We're motivated by eating, by sleeping, uh, by the things that we drink, and even having to go to the restroom. But when we fast, we deny our flesh, and we, we accept and embrace the spiritual side of, our, of ourselves. And as we hunger for food, we are constantly aware of our weakness, right? I mean, I don't know about you, when I'm not eating, I, I know that I'm hungry. I know that I'm still wanting to eat something. But in those moments where we are fasting, and if we allow that to be a practice we put into play, when we fast, we are aware that we are dependent and that we naturally default our impulses to go and provide for ourselves. But when we fast, we are denying that we're placing it at God's feet and trusting him to provide for us. And so the Holy Spirit is creating in us a repentant heart that can actually be used by God in mighty ways. And so bottom line is today, friends, that fasting is not about you looking more holy or righteous, right? Fasting is about God, and it's about our ability to trust Him, to, to trust that He provides for us. See, again, our impulse and our default is to provide for ourselves, but fasting puts us in a place where we are naturally more dependent on God. And fasting prepares us for times in our lives where we're not going to feel like everything's going well or that we're at the end of our rope, right? And yet somehow, in those moments, we will persevere. And fasting helps us to be better equipped for those moments. You don't always have to skip a meal either. Oh, that's the good news for some of us. We don't always like to skip a meal. You can, you can fast from excessive media usage, just as an example. You know, maybe after you watch a video like this or a video on social media, you might normally go, you know, take some time to scroll through. Well, instead of doing that, maybe dedicate those 30 seconds or that minute or however long it may be and spend that time praying. Spend that time talking with God. That's exactly what fasting is. So if you've never fasted before and you'd like to try it, I'd, I'd highly recommend you doing that. And if you'd like to do it as a community with other believers, we actually have a really exciting opportunity uh, coming up in a couple weeks now on May 31st. That's going to be Pentecost Sunday. The Wesleyan Church worldwide is going to be hosting a 
a global prayer event. And I would love it, and I think it'd be powerful if we as a community of believers would actually dedicate uh, one, one meal that we would normally eat on that Sunday, and actually instead of eating, would spend that time in praying and, and fasting and skipping that meal basically to better invite God's presence into our midst and into the midst of our leaders and our church leaders and everyone across our, our community. I think that would be an amazing thing, and I think it would change lives. If you'd like some more direction in that, I highly recommend uh, just reading Psalm 147 or Psalm 103 during that time where you might be skipping that meal. Again, those are all just some suggestions, just things to try and consider. Uh, but friends, as we participate in fasting, the reason we do that is not, again, so that we look holy and righteous and that we're, we're just suffering for Christ. But the idea is that we are aligning our hearts and aligning our bodies even with God and his desires. It, it makes us adopt the same words that the psalmist wrote in Psalm 51, where it says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Let's pray together. Now, Lord, we thank you again so much just for your blessings. We thank you for a time where we can just take a few moments and look at your scripture and look at uh, your experiences and how it changes us, how it forms us. Lord, as we go throughout our day, would you just remind us that we are yours, that we are covered in your grace, that we are totally accounted for and safe with you. Lord, as we continue uh, to counteract the effects of this virus and as we are continuing just to discover what a new normal looks like, help us just to integrate some different ways maybe to connect with you. Lord, that we would come out of this time not begrudgingly and not afraid or not anxious, but that we would be confident and strong and renewed in you and in you alone. Lord, we love you. We ask this on your name. Amen. I want to thank you guys so much uh, just for taking a few moments with me today. Remember as you go to be the church, and until we come together again, be safe and take care.